Okay, this is texturing 102. Um, so far we have learned how to texture using uh, regular shaders, adding colors to them, and also adding um, image maps, um, which practically wraps around the object that you're texturing. Um, in this case, we're going to use something called projection mapping, which allows you to maneuver some of the UVs on your objects so that when you project bricks on it, you can adjust how the bricks wrap around your object. Um, to begin, UVs is, you can describe UV as a 2D version of a 3D object. UVs essentially unwrap the 3D objects and makes it flat so you can map and pin your textures onto your three-dimensional object. Um, you probably be working more on it in your more advanced um, texturing and modeling class, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what it does. So if I select this object, all right, and I'm going to make a regular Lambert. So I'm going to go to Window, Animation. Oh, by the way, this scene is called Tower Landscape MB. Um, there are three layers, as you can see. And that's a hidden layer. That was a landscape I had made before. So if you want to look at it, there it is. There's some water in it, but you don't have to look at that while you're working on this. I also placed the upper and lower towel in its own layers so you can um, focus on one when you're modeling or when you're texturing. Okay, so we're going to select the first towel. I'm going to open the animation uh, rendering editor, the hypershade. As you can see, some of the shaders have already been pre-made for you. There is a grass which was part of the landscape, the ground, and also the ocean shader. But the brick and the stone are the textures that we are going to place in here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a regular Lambert. Double click on it, and I'm going to go to the color channel and place a checker layer, checker um, texture. All right. So this is the Lambert, okay? Let me make this a little smaller. All right. With this Lambert select, with this Lambert selected, I'm going to middle mouse click and drag it onto my towel. Now, if you don't see anything, simply press this ball, or you can press number six. As you can see, the mapping is really horrible. It looks good from one side, but when you turn it over, it is really, really bad. Okay, and also there's no texturing over here. So let's select it again and make sure we apply it to the entire surface. So I'm going to drag this again and that's what we have. Okay, all right. So next I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to apply it to the upper towel like so. All right, so the checkerboard kind of sort of defines the way the UVs are currently mapped on your object. So if you were to project an image like the stones or the bricks on it, it are probably going to look like this pretty bad. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use projection mapping to fix this. All right, so we're going to break into four views. Break into the uh, side view for first. If you don't see anything, press F on your keyboard and uh, you should be able to see your objects in here. I'm going to turn on shaded mode and also make sure that the texture is showing so we can take a look at what we're doing. I'm going to go back to the channel box and go ahead and hide the upper towel so we can concentrate and focus on this one. All right, so in order to fix this, we need to select the faces. So you can project textures or shaders not just on the entire image you, object, you can actually project them on faces. So I'm going to go to right click and this is my side view. All right, starting from up here, I'm going to drag across till I get to about right there. I think I'm going to leave the steps alone. So I'm just going to project the faces up until here. The steps will be a different color. All right. So if I go back to my perspective view, you can see that only the sides are selected. All right, I may even decide to do the top a little different because of the way the, the bricks wrapped around here, but we're gonna take a look and see what we have, all right? So with these faces selected, the side faces, I'm gonna go to, make sure you're in a polygon menu, create UVs, and there's several projections. 
The one we're going to work on is planar. Planar projection is like a flat projection on a flat plane. So if you project across, it's going to project across this plane and the one behind it. All right. You also have cylindrical mapping, which we are going to use, obviously, for the tower, the upper part. And spherical mapping is for um, a sphere. All right. So I'm going to go to planar mapping, and I'm going to open the options. Now, make sure your uh, bounding box is selected, and you have different axes to project from. Now, if you're going to project something from the top, let's say you want to project a tile floor image to a tile floor, you will choose the y-axis because you're projecting down. Now, if you're projecting a poster on a wall, you probably want to choose either the x or the z-axis, depending on what direction your object is facing. In this case, I'm going to use the camera projection, so it's going to project from what the camera is looking at. All right, so I'm going to... Um, reset so you know what it looks like in the beginning if you don't open the options the default projection is the x-axis so I'm gonna select camera and I'm gonna hit project apply all right now once I do that you're gonna notice that there are some handles that are around the projection these handles allow you to size the UVs on your object so grabbing the corner you can size it down so if you, the bricks need to be a lot smaller, you can continue sizing it until you get the size of the bricks you want. So in this case, if you have already defined the UVs on your object, when you put this brick texture on, onto it, it will automatically be sized already. Okay. Now you can skip this step and just project the bricks on it directly and size it then. But I kind of wanted to show you that you can also do it this way. All right. So I'm going to size it down to just about that. All right, I think that's about good. Uh, maybe a little more squarish, something like this. Okay, so I'm happy with my projections on the side of this object. Okay, I'm going to go back to object mode. All right, so the side looks pretty good. All right, we're going to work on the top in just a minute, uh, but the sides look pretty good. So now we're going to work on the front of the building. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my four views. Again, I'm going to turn the shading on and also the texture on. And this is the front of the building. All right, so we're going to right click, go to face, and this time we're only going to select the faces from the front. So with my mouse up here, I'm going to click and drag across. Don't drag across the whole thing, then you select the faces on the sides too. You want to drag just within, between here and here, not outside, okay? So I'm going to drag right over here across the top. And again, I'm not going to do the steps, just this part. All right, and you can see that in your perspective view, now the faces in the front and the faces in the back are selected, but not the sides. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Go to Create EVs, uh, reapply the planar mapping. And since I've already set the options, I can just click planar mapping. Um, again, we're going to size it, and in this way, we uh, actually, I'm not going to size this so I can show you how to fix it in case you forgot to use the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. All right. Now, what we need to do is to mix these match with those. So when you have your object selected, go to your attribute editor and you notice that there's a planar projection one and planar projection two. Planar projection one is the first projection, this one. Planar projection two is the second projection. You can make the tiling match by going to planar projection one and looking at the projection width and height and copy them. So this is 2.030. All right, I'm going to go to planar projection two and type in 2.030. This is 5.313. 5.313. All right, so with that done, the tiling is matching. All right, so even if you forgot to size the handles, it is okay. You can always go to the attribute editor, find the projection planes, uh, projections, and go ahead and fix it that way. So this looks pretty good to me, but as you notice, the top is bad. Now, however, it really depends on what your screenshot or your camera beauty shot is. If we are never going to see the top of this tower, you can actually just leave them the way it is and not to worry about it. But I really don't like the way this part is done. Okay, right over here. So I'm going to fix the top part um, and just skip this part. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my side view first. I'm just going to grab, go to face, 
select the object, I'm going to grab the faces right about here. Okay, and I'm going to go to create UVs planar mapping. All right, again, I'm going to match the numbers. Forgot what they are, I'm going to get back to it later. Hit enter. And so, that's the way it's kind of crooked. So I'm going to go back to my front view, uncheck that, and now select the faces from here to here. All right, and again, do a planar mapping. All right, so now I have kind of lined up it better than before. This is still a little crooked, but like I said, it really depends on how you want to um, this does look a little crooked to me, so let me take a look at the projection. And the projection to um, make sure all the numbers match. They don't match, that's why. If you take a look at it, there's a rotation value of minus 3.938. So you can simply just copy, paste, enter. Copy, paste, enter. Copy. Paste. Oops, that doesn't look right, does it? Let me see. Hmm, something has gone away. Let me undo all that. And I'm just going to kind of sort of fix it by maybe fixing the rotation value. So let's check that out. Okay. All right, if I put in minus 0.5, it doesn't do anything. But something has gone array while I was projecting and copying the numbers. But um, we're just gonna go with this for right now. And uh, we'll fix the top. Now, if you have a different face selection, you can also project a different image on here. But right now, we're just going to go to planar projection three, and maybe use the sliders and make it a little smaller. Let's say 2.2, kind of sort of make it match. And we're gonna do the height, something like that. So. It's 2.15, just make it even, or 2.16, 4.6. All right, and go to projection four, which are these. 2.16 and 4.6. All right, so there we go. This one looks fine. So it must be something I did while I was projecting it. Kind of, I was messing with the handle maybe, and I clicked on something by mistake. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. Um, you can also use the handles to size it, but um, to get a better projection and a perfect projection, if you don't mess with a handle and just change the numbers in the projection uh, attributes, you probably get a, a much nicer projection, okay? More accurate, all right? So we're done with that part. Now I'm gonna unhide the towel. And I'm going to do the same thing to this, select the tower. This time, I'm going to use a cylindrical mapping. Now, cylindrical mapping don't have much um, options for you. You just have to apply. And you have the little handles again. So you can drag on the top green one. It'll size them down to get shorter and shorter. So you can do whatever you like with it to make the size of the bricks or the stone appropriate to what you need. All right. And on here, there's also a projection. Uh, poly cylinder projection, you can also switch the projection height from here. So I'm going to make it even three, all right, which is easier to remember. And sweep is how much it goes around, I, I figure. So if I, you know, if I do that, it'll repeat more times. Okay, it was set at 180. So let's say I'm going to do a 150 sweep. Um, they look a lot more rectangular. If I want it to be squarish, maybe a 90 sweep. And now they are more squarish, okay? So that's how projection mapping works, okay? And on this one, if you're gonna fly a plane or a bird flying around your castle and you're gonna see the top, then I would 
select these faces and do a planar projection on the y-axis to project my texture in here. But if we're never going to see it, um, this is fine. Okay. All right. Now, now that we have fixed our UVs, you can then open up your hypershade, and all you have to do is to apply the textures. So I'm going to select this object. And actually, no, I'm going to select the faces because remember, we did not um, apply UVs to the bottom. So I'm going to make sure I grab all these faces on the tower, but not the steps. Okay, I'm simply going to middle mouse click and drag and drop it on here. Okay, there you have it. All right, I must have missed um, this part. I'm going to make sure that face is selected. Hold shift, select that face. I miss these faces and also drop it in here okay so there we go the bricks are nicely projected no more crazy looking other than here which is probably what I did when I was that's when the handles trying to deselect it earlier and let's go with this one I'm gonna drop the stone texture so middle mouse click and drag stone texture and there you have it all right your textures are now projected on your objects um, and their size accordingly. Okay, so at this point, if you want to go ahead and select the faces of the, the steps and give it maybe a different color, it's probably easier to select from one of the front views. You can grab the faces right here. All right, and I believe that's a surface called ground that I've already made. So you can right click, go to add existing material. Let's choose ground. And now you have a dark um, gray step. Oh, miss this one. Brown. And there you go. This is planar mapping. Oh, miss that one too. Go to select that one, right click. Assign existing material. That would be the brick material. Okay, all right, so that is your basic texturing. And again, for stuff like this, if all you're going to see is your towel going up, if your camera view is going to capture that shot, so let me turn on the backdrop. All right, so there is a render cam set up for you. So if you go to panels, perspective render cam, you can pick your favorite cam camera view. And depends on what you want to see, if you want to move the tower, if you want to change your landscape, it's perfectly fine. I'm just putting it there just for um, a tutorial basis. So like if I angle it like that, I will probably go fix the textures right here. But if you angle it this way, as though you are looking up at the tower and you're real close, and all you're going to see is that, okay? If that is your camera view, so we're going to turn on the resolution gate. If that's all you see, let me render that for you. You don't have to fix those textures um, that are misplaced. All right, so there we have it. This is Texturing 102. Thanks for watching.